The mountain's biome is the most uninviting and dangerous region in Valheim, with its freezing temperatures, starving and relentless creatures, and deep, dark, and dangerous but rewarding dungeons, you will be pushed to your limit. Follow me on your adventure through this biome as we clash with wolves, mine for hidden treasures, conquer the Valheim's most dangerous but rewarding frost caves, and defeat this biome's terrifying boss. First things first, let's make sure we're ready to enter the mountains. The mountains biome is the first and only in Valheim to add temperature effects. Without the proper preparation, as you enter the snowy mountains, you will fall under the freezing effect. With this effect applied, you won't last long as you will receive 100% reduced health regeneration and a 60% reduction in stamina regeneration, in addition to taking one damage per second to your health. Fortunately for us, we have a way to prevent this status effect from being applied. Frost resistance meads, when consumed, provide resistance to freezing for 10 minutes. To craft the frost resistance mead, first cook the mead base for frost resistance at a cauldron and place the base into a fermenter. You will have unlocked the fermenter recipe following the swamp biome. I recommend crafting a handful of these as you'll likely want to be prepared for an adventure lasting longer than the 10 minute duration of a single mead. The meads fortunately stack to a quantity of 10. With your meads in hand, equip your best swamp weapons and armor to face the biome. If you are interested in recommendations, I would recommend the full iron armor set for maximum protection. You could include the root harness chest piece, but pierced damage isn't as prevalent in this biome as others, so it might be best to simply maximize armor in this case. As for weapons, any of the iron weapons will do for melee, so simply choose your favorite. I do recommend, however, that you bring the huntsman bow and craft fire and poison arrows, as many of the creatures are vulnerable to either fire or poison. Before we get into the mountain's expansive dungeons, let's first jump into the mountain's overworld. The mountain's overworld is barren and unforgiving and susceptible to blinding snowstorms. Our main objective here will be to use the wishbone to find hidden treasures beneath the ground surface. Before we do that, you will need to be prepared for the lethal creatures you will encounter. First are wolves. Wolves often travel in packs and will attack you in quick succession, really draining your stamina. If you can, try to isolate them with a bow or take them down from a distance. Beware. If you do hear them howl, they may be calling for their friends for backup. Do your best to kill them quickly before they recruit their pals. Once defeated, they will drop the wolf fang, meat, health, and most rarely, their trophy. These items will be used in creating more advanced foods and armor as we will discuss later in the video. Next are drakes, which are airborne dragons who fire frost damaging projectiles. You will find these creatures often protecting glowing pink orbs. These orbs are critical for your mountain's progression, which I will cover in detail in the final section of this video. That said, you will know a drake is nearby when you hear their shriek. Fortunately, they are easy to defeat with a bow and specifically with fire arrows as they are weak to fire. Once defeated, they will drop the drake trophy and freeze glands. As like the wolf, the items dropped by the drake will be used later in weapons and food recipes. Thirdly are stone golems which when approached will emerge from the ground often mistaken for rocks. These behemoths pack a punch so be very careful. They have a major weakness to pickaxe damage so if you can find the room hit them with a well timed pickaxe swing. Once overcome they will drop crystal, stone and rarely the stone golem trophy. Crystal is mostly used in decorative construction but is an ingredient in one specific weapon. And the final creature native to the overworld are the Fenring. Fenring are unique in that they exclusively spawn at night. Be wary of their leap attack which can quickly close the distance between you and them. And like the wolves, they may howl to summon reinforcements. Like many of the mountain's creatures, they are weak to fire, so try some fire arrows or even a torch to light them up. After falling, they will drop a wolf fang and possibly the Fenring trophy. With an understanding of the threats within the biome, we can now begin our search for treasure. Equip the wishbone and you will notice an audio and visual pinging effect emitting from your character. The frequency and strength of this pinging will increase as you get closer to treasures. Navigate around the biome until you find a spot where it starts pinging like crazy. This is your signal to dig. Before digging, if you happen to see a ruin or cabin on your quest, search it for chests. Within these chests, you will have a chance to find onion seeds. Onion seeds can be planted in the meadows to grow onions, a very useful food recipe ingredient. In addition, as you are crossing the barrens of the mountains, keep your eyes open for obsidian deposits. Quickly mine these for obsidian for the creation of obsidian arrows. These arrows will be invaluable for us as I will explain later in this video. Now back to digging. You should shortly find a silver vein. There is a chance your wishbone detected a silver necklace or some skeletal remains which can be disappointing. Oh dude we found treasure. Holy fuck what is treasure? but this is rare. One trick I do recommend in excavating the silver vein completely until the vein is not touching any other piece of ground. At this point, when you smash it with your iron pickaxe, the entire vein will crumble. Take your silver ore back to a smelter and voila, you have silver. 
Silver unlocks a plethora of weapons and the wolf armor set and wolf fur cape. I will leave a full list of weapons and armor you will unlock in this biome on screen. You may notice I did exclude one excellent armor set that we will unlock following our adventures in the frost caves coming in the next section of this video. And lastly, take note of the wolf fur cape and wolf armor chest. Each of these items, when worn, provide resistance to frost damage. As a result, when one of these items are worn, you no longer need to have a frost mead popped to survive in the mountains. With the overworld explored, let's dive into the mountains deep, dark, and most importantly, rewarding dungeons. The frost cave's entrances can be hard to spot as they blend in with the mountain's rocky terrain. These caves do present a challenge but also provide worthwhile rewards. Ensure you are properly equipped before entering. At this stage, you will have unlocked an abundance of new food recipes. Check out my full list of mountains food recipes before diving in to maximize your survivability. Inside, you will be faced with a sheet of glass which can easily be meleeed down. Inside, you will find an abundance of dangerous creatures. Ghouls have low health but often travel in packs. They have heavy resistance to fire but are weak to poison. The frost caves is where your poison arrows will come in handy. Once defeated, they will drop the wolf fang and ulf trophy. Second are bats which are more a nuisance than anything. Swat them down for leather scraps. And thirdly are the cultists. Cultists are fire casters which can pack a punch and are immune to fire damage. Like the ooles, they are weak to poison. Defeating them yields the red jute and rarely the cultist trophy. The jute can be used to craft decorations for your home and the trophy is a critical armor component ingredient we will touch on shortly. Before getting into the juiciest loot in the frost caves, I want to first highlight three lesser known tips you could benefit from while navigating the caves. First, both the iron doors and braziers can be broken for iron and bronze respectively. Second, instead of picking the crystals from the dungeon's walls, break them with a sword or bow. This yields more crystal than simply picking. And thirdly, and vastly more rare, you can find a fishing rod in a frost cave if you have not been lucky enough to find Haldor. While these spawns are exceedingly rare, a big open frozen lake can spawn within a frost cave where you will find a runestone and a fishing rod next to a poor viking's skeleton remains. But beware, as these are protected by a stone golem. As you venture deeper into the frost caves, you will start to find Fenris hair either on pedestals or draped over wooden structures. The Fenris hair is the final and most important ingredient you will need to craft my personal favorite armor set in the game, the Fenris armor. This is the only armor to give a speed boost in addition to a set bonus yielding fire resistance and additional points to your fist skill. Combine this armor set with the flesh rippers for major damage. While we turn our focus to the mountains biome, I will leave the recipes and upgrade costs for both the Fenris armor and flesh rippers on screen for your information. To summon the boss, you will first need to find their runestone to highlight their location on your map. These are usually found inside ruined structures across the overworld of the map or less frequently can be found within frost caves. Remember those glowing pink orbs we saw earlier protected by drakes? Those are dragon eggs. After you have her location, you will need to collect three of these eggs to summon motor. These cannot be transported through portals and each egg weighs 200 weight, so you'll either need a friend to help carry them for you or do so in a couple trips. When you're ready for combat, travel to her location and place three of her eggs in each of the altar slots to begin the fight. Motor has three major attacks. First, a barrage while she is in flight. Okay, he's duking me out. I don't wanna avoid this. Or, or just get fucking smoked by it. Okay. <laughs> Second, a melee attack while she is grounded where she will swipe, claw, or bite you. And thirdly, a breath attack also while she is grounded, launching a blizzard-like blast of breath doing frost in addition to chop and pickaxe damage. Motor is immune to frost, spirit, and stagger, so I do not recommend bringing a weapon that does frost damage like the Frostner. But she is weak to fire, like many other mountain creatures, so fire arrows are welcome. In general, you will want to wear the highest tier armor available to you and bring a strong bow as motor will take flight and otherwise be out of range. Fire arrows will be strong due to her weakness to fire, but I generally would go with obsidian arrows as their base damage exceeds the benefit of capitalizing on motor's weakness to fire. Lastly, wolves, fenrings, and drakes can and will spawn throughout the fight to complicate things. For this reason, I do recommend you complete the fight during the day for reduced add spawns. Once defeated, Motor will drop her trophy and the dragon tier. Mount her trophy on the corresponding sacrificial stone to gain her forsaken power. This forsaken power will assist significantly on your boating adventures going forward, forcing exclusive tailwinds while sailing for a duration of 5 minutes. And secondly, the dragon tier provides the recipe for the artisan table. The artisan table will enable you to craft the refining equipment used for the resources you will soon be gathering in the plains as you turn your direction towards that biome. And if you're looking to learn more about the plains biome, check out my comprehensive video guide on screen now. Thanks for watching.